And now we don't only have the chance to present different solutions, we have them live uh, and in the shape of real people here, no less than four different makers or power users of multilingual solutions. Just before I let them speak, um, a little overview, who of you speaks several languages? Who is multi multilingual? Yeah, a quite impressive majority. <laughs> uh, who of you uses multilingual plugins or a multilingual plugin in WordPress? Good, so everybody knows what it's about. No need to have some introductory words, I think. And who of you uses uh, translation uh, services inside WordPress? Yeah, a minority, but it will be interesting to talk about this today. So first of all, let's make a round of introduction with those four uh, gentlemen. Um, we start from the, this side with Robert Windisch. Yeah, hi. Um, I'm Robert Windisch from Imside. We're doing the plugin called Multilingual Press, which is based on multi site So um, it's a different approach than the other plugins. So we use the core function of multi site to enable people to uh, connect languages and post with each other. Hi, my name is Pascal. Um, I live in Fribourg in Switzerland. And we are a web agency. Our name is Ethos Digital. And we, we use a lot of VPML, so they asked me to represent them because they could not send somebody to, to be here today. Uh, hello, uh, I am Frédéric. I am the founder of uh, Polylang, which is a um, VPN web plugin available on uh, WordPress.com. Hello, I'm Remy. I'm here for Supertext. We are a translation agency, and we've built the plugin on top of his uh, Polylang plugin, so that you can order translations easier, quicker, and hopefully with less drama. And if we have to, we also use uh, WPML, but basically we do prefer Polylang. <laughs> to, to put that out there in the beginning. So my, my first question goes to the newcomer in the area of uh, multilingual WordPress, which is uh, Remy Blattler and uh, Supertext. Um, now, in 2018, um, most of the known multilingual plugins have been working since years. They are somehow well established. And we have seen uh, new solutions which have come up. So I, I, I didn't mention Augustin Prot of Wiglot, who couldn't uh, make it to attend this talk, unfortunately, which is one of the newer solutions which have appeared recently. Um, Supertext, it is also quite recent in the WordPress multilingual space. Uh, why did you enter this, uh, this market? Um, basically, I mean, we as a translation agency, we have to go where our customers is. I know that's marketing speech, but we had more and more customers that were using uh, WordPress. And uh, it's, it's, if you use WordPress and you have to work with a translation agency, you used to copy your WordPress blog post into a Word file with all, all the HTML code or without, both are painful. And uh, we translate it in a Word file, you have to copy it back, you lose your formatting, and it's, it's one big mess. So we had one customer that said, hey, we need a better solution, and we were sitting together with him, and then for some people in here, they might remember block work, block work. And basically, together with Blockwork, uh, we built that plugin, and uh, the user base has been growing ever since. And currently, WordPress is our fastest growing uh, integration with the content management system. So, this is definitely for us the place to be. You do also work with other content management systems, like um, you have a solution for it that integrates with Drupal, and another one that integrates with Type 3. Um, that's correct, yes. I mean, with Typo 3, we're just using the default um, import-export stuff, but for Drupal, we have uh, basically an equal functionality plugin as for, for WordPress. You uh, representatives of three uh, fully featured multilingual solutions. How do you see the evolution uh, of the WordPress platform and ecosystem in the late, latest years? 
Um, have there been changes that have influenced the way your plugin works? Um, yeah, for us, um, the multi-site feature um, gets really much features every year. So it was introduced in WordPress 3.0, which is like, um, I think, 10 years ago or something like that, or nine years ago. So uh, this was before it was a, a fork, so it is uh, stable and uh, gets feature every, every time in the WordPress universe. And there are also like um, upcoming features for multi-site for giving a global admin and having more features to coming to multi-site. So we are really appreciating what um, is done for the core that we can uh, then leverage in our plugin. Well, I, I think for me, two, two points are important. Also, as a web agency, and what we like in VPML, I mean, also for other plugins, but it's that you have very good integration. So VPML has worked very hard to have integration with WooCommerce, with DV, for example, to Theme Builder, and with a, a lot of themes. So it's very easy to, to bring things together and to be able to have a good um, um, development environment when you can do what, what you want to do. I think the other change that is coming is now this uh, automatic translation, like with Wiglot. This is uh, kind of the opposite of what you do. You do like high quality translation, and Wiglot do like automatic translation. Also, in the VPML now, in the version 4.0 of the um, new editor, you can, you can use automatic translation as a tool to help you translate, to, to gain time, let's say. And also, it recognizes things you have translated, and you can like not translate two times the same things. So it's interesting this integration with um, using high-end like translator, but also to have the tools to be able to, to not lose time, to have a specific glossary for your terms, and to be able to integrate all this together, to have the best from what the computer is, I mean, what the software is being able to do and what human beings are doing, uh, able to do. Um, yes, you are, you are right. Um, what we see is that the percentage of uh, users who are using multilingual websites uh, in WordPress is not uh, growing, in fact. Um, probably it's, it's not the difficulty of using the tools, but the time they take to uh, translate the text, which is very important and the talking point. So uh, the fact that we need to find tools to, uh, to uh, decrease the time to uh, translate the, the text is very important to, uh, to uh, attract more, uh, more, uh, more people and uh, for them to uh, allow them to translate uh, their site in, in a multiple language. For example, if you want to uh, have a, a WooCommerce website to uh, attract more, uh, uh, more visitors, more, more uh, clients, uh, then uh, you need to translate it in single language, but uh, the time you, you, you take to translate the, all the, the articles and so, and so on can be so long that uh, it's not very interesting for you. It's a drawback. So we need, we need uh, uh, to provide this automatic translation tool, then you can modify, uh, the, modify the translation uh, yes, you can modify the, uh, the automatic translation to, uh, to improve it and uh, have higher quality because today the automatic translation is not uh, a good quality. So, as you say, the, um, the workflow for the user, the, the ease of translating uh, content of a website is extremely important now. Um, a working uh, multi-site solution it's not everything, it has to work and to be easy and quick to translate. And in terms of workflow, what should a, a user, what does a user need to know about that field of uh, translation services? Like there, there are many different ones. Supertext, you are uh, most of all a translation service. Uh, WPML has integrated since quite a long time different, many different uh, translation yes. providers. Um, inside Polylang, there are options of, uh, there is the option of super text. Yes, there, there are, one, there are approximately three, uh, three add-ons uh, which provide uh, automatic or, um, or professional translation. Supertext is one of them. And maybe I forgot to tell something about uh, uh, multilingual press as well in that area. I'm not aware of 
everything. So what should the user know to orientate himself in that space and to take a decision? How do I want to, um, what, what will be my strategy of translating my content? And what should I know about quality, about uh, different approaches to tr translations? Well, I think first you, you need to know what you want to achieve, right? If, if you want to do a very high-end website with very well-translated uh, text, for example, for your homepage or for very important pages for the marketing part of your website, then certainly you want to use a human being to do those translation. And if you want to use human beings, you have different human beings doing different kind of translation. So I think the kind of the goal and also the budget you have is kind of the key from to, to think about what kind of integration and workflow you want to implement. Also, if you work a lot on your website, like you have a big website and you are creating many pages and then you need to translate them in two or three languages, it means then you have to focus on the workflow. Like you want to have a very good workflow because you do a lot of those translation. If you just translate one page per year, you, you don't care about HTML because it's just cleaning one time. But if you do a lot of translation, then the workflow becomes the, the center. So, so in VPML, so you have um, you have this role of um, like um, manager of translation, which is not admin of the website, but allows uh, to to set somebody with a role to to allow people to see the source language and the target language. So you have those kind of tools which helps, let's say, to have a, a workflow where you know who is doing what with which kind of authorization. Yeah, uh, we have a um, new plugin. Uh, from a translation agency we are partnering with is Translation uh, uh, Translation Manager, and um, it's uh, built up upon multilingual press. So you can um, export your um, uh, posts and pages from your WordPress uh, to the agency and get the translations back. And there is like um, like SuperText did it. Like all the um, stuff is um, already in in there. The code and um, they translate all the strings you you need to do. So. Um, the um, approach is like, um, like um, he said, um, it's really like, uh, what's your goal you want to achieve? Um, how many uh, people needs to, needs to access that? How many people need to do that? So um, yeah, the, the goal is uh, simply, you need to choose which solution is um, for your current workflow the best. I guess the question is always, do you want to make the translations inside WordPress? Or do you want to work with someone externally that does this? I don't know. I mean, there are professional translation tools out there that the professional translator has, and they are much more powerful than anything you could ever put into WordPress. But obviously, it makes your workflow a little bit more complicated. So there's always a bit of an offset. But I think, especially with WPML, they put in quite some effort to, to level, uh, to raise the, the, the productivity you have if you stay inside WordPress, and it obviously takes the time away where you have to export and import, which is always a bit of a complicated thing. Just, just a, short, a short point, I think, first of all, we use a lot of Google Docs for translation because uh, we work, for, for example, for hotels in uh, the canton of Fribourg, and you, you need at least five or six people to review the text. Because, you know, you have political impacts, I want my hotel, it's, it's very complex, right? So you cannot just, you have to write the text, you have to proofread, but then you have those people to, to, to agree about the text. So I think a feature would be this ability to have a kind of Google Docs within WordPress. This would be very nice. You know, with people being to uh, comment and suggest, this would be paradise. That would be quite cool, yes. <laughs> uh, sorry, there is, there is, um, um, uh, just for the uh, um, working together, um, there are some things coming up in Gutenberg. Which you, what people can work together on a on a document. So there is some like some yeah some some different. kind of some some kind of that is um, is uh, I think planned for for Gutenberg to to achieve that because it's the it's the ground feature is there. So we have revisions in WordPress and you have like the visual editor and you can do n new things because of Gutenberg itself. Mm -hmm. So I think um, I was writing something about like um, having like collaboration on, on on a document, but I'm not really hundred percent sure about that. But um, Gutenberg like brings new stuff. Okay. Just one thing that I want to add. Maybe it's not very frequent in Switzerland, but um, uh, I often see customers who um, translate their website in uh, automatically in several languages, and they just don't think that uh, the translation of the website is not uh, the end. Then 
once the, 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 the website is translated, you have to interact with your customer. So if you only use automatic translation uh, and you are not able to write yourself in, uh, in the language you have on, the web task, on your website, sorry, uh, you won't be able to interact uh, with your uh, clients, um, I would say, in an efficient way. And believe me, I uh, sometimes have to discuss with a customer who don't speak either French or English, which are the two languages I can speak. Uh, and so we communicate with uh, through uh, Google Translate, for example. It's just a nightmare. It's impossible to understand ourselves. And very often, I finally refund the customer because because we can't help them. So when you create a multilingual website, the end is not the translation of the website itself. Thank you for those insights. Um, I would like to move now to a, an area of questioning that is um, interesting for me as a, as a user that uh, has tried different solutions and is always worried about the future long-term stability of the websites I built. Um, I'm, I will mention uh, something that happened four years ago at the WordCamp Europe 2014 in Sofia, uh, which was an initiative of bringing a first step of multilingual awareness into WordPress core. It was the um, post-language proposal for core, which was co-authored during a contributor day by a group of people, including Casper, one of your former colleagues, and including Sylvan Hagen, who is uh, possibly here. Not in this room yet, but he might be here later. And this was a proposal of um, bringing into WordPress uh, the notion of a language that a post, that the content could have a language which would be stored in a, in a standardized way and which would bring the possibility of um, compatibility between multilingual solutions. Like you could de disable a plugin and enable another one and your content would still continue to work. It seems that this effort hasn't been uh, pushed forward during the last years, so it's in a limbo. Are there other initiatives that are trying to standardize multilingual uh, content in WordPress? And do you see areas where this could be moving, moving forward and where the community could be a help? I mean, I, I don't, I'm not deep enough in the WordPress world, but from our perspective, we would very much enjoy uh, if there would be an initiative to put this forward. So, um, Some work can, has already been started. Uh, I believe it's in WordPress 4.7. Um, there is a switching local uh, mechanism has been introduced. Um, unfortunately, I would say that uh, it has not been it has been adopted by uh, WordPress itself. So now, if you are if you are, uh, you can select each user in WordPress can select its own language for the admin interface, um, and uh, each user will receive his emails in his language. So this is the first step. Um, the issue I see today is that. Uh, I haven't seen any plugin or thing which adopt this system. I have seen only one, and this is WooCommerce. All other plugins uh, did not integrate uh, this mechanism. So if you, if a plugin is sending emails, for example, it, except WooCommerce, none of them uh, take care of uh, the language of, uh, of the email. Even if uh, WordPress has now the, the mechanism uh, uh, ready. So uh, it's not only a matter of uh, core adding a new feature for, uh, for multilingual or for, um, for internationalization also, which is very important. But it's also uh, a matter of uh, uh, third party developers, of plugin and same adopting these new tools. So uh, I believe that there, there is a lot of inertia. 
Yeah, I, I think it would be good to have uh, something like that in the core of WordPress. Um, and VPML also thinks that. I mean, they told me that. But of course, if you have such a possibility in the core, it will not reach the level of, of the plugin we represent because we are specialized in that. So we, we add a lot of um, functionalities that will never be in core. It's like with Gutenberg. Gutenberg will be able to do many things, but if you compare with, let's say, Divi from Elegant Thames, it will always do much more because it is specialized in that. So the question is the integration, like you said, between, I mean, if you change the core, how will it integrate and not break uh, processes we already have with our plugins? This is kind of the, the issue. Because you don't, want, you don't want to break websites, right? So it's, uh, it's always the issue how you change, what is the, the path to change the core. Yeah, um, in Seville, there was also the uh, multilingual core proposal on the computer day. And um, there were several people involved, also the people from WPML, um, um, to work towards getting a multilingual in core. And, but the problem was that it's very time consuming to um, deal with all the questions and um, workflows that arise because it's not only like um, having the flag on a tag, flag on a, on a, um, on a post or page, something like that. But it's, it's even more like ha getting, having the people um, working with that and having the base function for all plugins to um, join that, yeah. to have a, like, um, a layer of that and to have the API ready for all, for all things. But um, as uh, Matt said in, I think, Montreal several months ago, um, it's still uh, on the roadmap, um, but it's not the, the next time because Gutenberg is currently the most um, important one, but it's still on the roadmap and um, it will come to core um, in the future, but it's not really a, a, a current topic because uh, as Matt um, said to the um, Moodling core proposal, it's currently plugin space, so the only thing that this proposal would do is help the plugins to work with each other. Um, thank you. I would like to open now a bit the discussion to the audience and accept questions about the things we discussed or about other aspects of the multilingual. Everyone is satisfied. <laughs> okay, so I have a question about WooCommerce. So I know for Polylang there is a pro version with, uh, compatible with WooCommerce. And I'm interested to hear about multilingual press because I like the multi-site features. So how does it work if I have an e-commerce and I want is in one language and now I want to add a second language? How should I do that easily? And or should I choose uh, multilingual press or WPML or Polyland Pro for that? Yeah, um, we get this question uh, for uh, multi-site and WooCommerce very often. Um, that's why we released our, our plugin on WooCommerce.com. And the next feature we uh, put in, the, in this version is um, the uh, out-of-the-box uh, WooCommerce support. So having the databases and the tables um, out-of-the-box ready for, uh, for this plugin. And um, because we um, do the new version, the next uh, plugin we will do is um, the synchronizing the stock. So to have like, um, if you have a um, stock-based system that you have like the, the same stock on all sides because we know that um, um, by using multi-site and um, having the core doing the main work and not um, as the other plugins need to do, like um, twist WordPress a little bit um, to, to make it work, um, um, to um, by doing let, letting core do the whole work, um, uh, we are, um, compliant to like all plugins. So that's why it's um, for people who um, are using um, uh, WooCommerce in a professional enterprise or in a professional um, um, scale environment, we know that um, our solution is the, um, like the solution they choose. We, we get it from, from other agencies because then you have the most, um, the most um, like ways to work with WordPress itself and to use the plugins you want to. So, that's in our roadmap, and we um, fully support that. Um, yeah, by by having that um, multi-site and WooCommerce ready. Very very short. So so VPML has a very deep integration within uh, WooCommerce. So you can basically translate everything in WooCommerce, uh, the different types of elements using uh, VPML. Yeah. Um, 
when we start working on uh, WooCommerce multilingual, uh, you just must know that uh, there is WooCommerce. That is already a big part for the compatibility, but uh, you must think also to the extension. And uh, sometimes it's even more difficult for the extension. So uh, it's not because there are integration with WooCommerce that there are integration with the extent, all the extension of WooCommerce. It's much more complex to translate, uh, to, to have a WooCommerce, WooCommerce multilingual or any uh, e-commerce multilingual than uh, just a, uh, a website with page and... Uh, yes. If there are no other questions for the moment, uh, another one for me. Yes. There is. Good. I just have a question regarding the, the implementation of multilingual in WordPress. Uh, what's your thoughts about that regarding your, your business? Because obviously some of you uh, is uh, gaining money and it's your work. So what, what is your perspective on that? Uh, do you need to reinvent, reinvent yourself or? Um, a multilingual plugin is, uh, I would say, 10% approximately uh, of what, of uh, storing uh, the language, the translation group, and, and so on. 90% of the multilingual plugin is uh, much more complex to help uh, you to save time. For example, export uh, content from a, a translation to the other, and, uh, and so on. So uh, I would say that most probably the core would uh, focus on how the, the translation are stored, the language is stored, so it doesn't uh, remove the interest of uh, the existing plugin. So if sometime uh, the, the core includes, for example, the language in, in the post, we will have all to adapt to this new way of storing the language, but uh, that, that will not remove the interest of the plugin, I, I believe. Well, I, I cannot speak for VPML since I'm not working uh, for them directly, but um, I think the, for the future, the, the main change in the five or ten years will be this, this uh, big uh, pressure, but also opportunity from automatic translation. Because, uh, for example, Google is uh, working very hard on that. Uh, they have Google Translate, but actually they, have, they are now working on a back version, which is not public. And uh, they're using uh, artificial intelligence also to better understand the context of language. And in maybe in some years they will come out with this new version, and I think they will, they will be in advance to all others when they do this. So I think this uh, automatic translation and how to integrate this with high-quality translators, this is the key for me. Because human beings will still be superior for a long time for translation, I think. But uh, still, technology can help a lot to, to gain time, to, to be very consistent with uh, the words, how you translate, to, to find connections, cementing connections, to suggest words. All those kind of workflow, it's, uh, the technology can help a lot. So I think this is kind of the, I mean, what the plugins have to think about in the future, how to adapt to that, how to integrate this. Yeah, for us, uh, we are basing on core, so um, if something comes into core, we are happy to adapt. Does it answer the question? question? Yeah, here. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I've got a quick question about uh, speed, because uh, we all know that it's really important. And uh, uh, do we have benchmark or something to compare all the plugins and to know which one is more uh, reactive? Or so? I know that WPML is a lot of consuming of speed for the website, for sure. <clears throat> but I don't know the other one and if we can have comparison somewhere or if somebody already did some, something like that, a benchmark or something, if we can something, find something anywhere. Yeah, I would just uh, jump in for the other plugins. Um, the I think uh, experiencing the performance of the website um, or having benchmark, um, um, like ma many things of these plugins uh, happen in the back end. So um, it could be slow for a, for a Ditto, for example, but um, um, it's not the, like most, most people seeing the page from the front end. So um, 
I can uh, answer that for our plugin. We are using the core feature of WordPress, so we don't need to like um, do things uh, while the site is loading and stuff. So we need to like have a very small imprint in that. So we are not si simply not standing in the way of the core. So that's why we are by, by default um, like fast. But that's yeah, depends. Well, yes, it's, it's true that VPML has uh, the reputation of being uh, slower, let's say. It's a, it's a big plugin, it has many capabilities. But also, if you use a, a caching plugin, then you, you, will, you will change this. Because if the, the, your pages are already like, prepared in HTML, then you don't lose that much time. Yes, exactly. If you use a cache plugin, all plugins are equal. Yes, exactly. Because uh, the work is made only once. Oh, sorry. My question was also for the admin because yeah, a lot of clients are using websites. Yeah, it's pretty slow when you're you're not cached by the, the the WordPress, and if you have got some tricks or something. What do you mean admin? Like when you are working? When you are trying to 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 translate to to go to another page to to move around. Well, I I have a good connection where we work, so we don't have those problems. So I don't know. I mean, I guess if you have a slow internet connection, it may play a part, but if you have a good internet connection, I think it's fine. You are right. In fact, we can see that, especially on the WooCommerce site. Uh, if, you, um, if you have a slow, a slow feature in WordPress, the multilingual uh, website will only be slower because, for example, if you are working with WooCommerce, you need to uh, synchronize the price, the stock, and uh, and so on. So if you uh, WooCommerce is already quite slow uh, on on the website because it saw a lot of uh, uh, meta, and so uh, when you when you have to synchronize that in two, three, four language, you just are two, three, four times slower, and we cannot change uh, that really. Uh, but WooCommerce will improve a lot. With the new, uh, I don't know if you are aware of that, but uh, there are currently a, a feature plugin to have uh, all, all meta store in uh, only uh, an extra tables. So um, uh, it will be much, uh, much faster, and thus uh, it will be much faster also with multilingual plugins. Yeah, uh, considering uh, WooCommerce, um, this, this data storage uh, um, things where you simply um, can uh, rid again rid of the um, saving stuff what WooCommerce does. So we use it for our uh, strong stock synchronization that we um, uh, jump in when WooCommerce uh, gets his data. So that's why we um, are very fast to um, use our own um, stuff we want to do. But uh, for WooCommerce and all the pl other plugins, they are getting the same stock. So I get it from the admin perspective. Um, it um, depends on where you where you are and uh, how much plugins you have acti activated, but um, yeah, by um, doing um, like for us using most of the core functions, um, also in the backend we are not really um, around there, so we're not um, yeah causing any like um, lags because we doing we are less um, visible in the backend. Well, thank you. <laughs> Another question? Um, I would like to use the opportunity to have you here to get a bit more insight about the development process of your different uh, tools, um, as far as you can share them. Like, um, some of your products are having a, an, a free open version, which is on WordPress.org, and a professional version, which adds features. Um, how does the development process work for the free version? Are you accepting bug fixes, contributions? Does this happen? Um, do you invite uh, contributions to that code base? And how, how does the, that process work? Yeah, uh, to answer this for our plugins, um, we um have a, we had a free version, uh, we now, uh, with a version 3, we have it uh, only uh, for Pro, and we will have a, we, we have a re free version, um, I think, uh, next year or th that, uh, in that time period. 
and we are um, being on GitHub, so everybody can uh, contribute to the to the uh, free version, which is currently the, the old version of that. But um, we are um, working there, and but uh, as we know that many people are using our plugins, we are not getting that much um, um, code contributions from outside because um, yeah, it depends on who, whose agency is working with that. Um, but we are um, using the um, GitHub um, feedback and uh, getting support questions and doing then um, add-ons for that. So for VPML, there there is only a pay version. Actually, there is two pay version, and you have also live accounts. Um, you have a kind of blog version with limited features and a full uh, CMS version. Um, and now there is, I think there is more than six hundred thousand um, pay uh, pay customers to to VPML. And for contribution, I'm not aware exactly of how the process goes in VPML, but what I know is, is because it's a very ancient plugin, you have a lot of solutions. So if you go on, on internet, you can find people having written a lot of PHP code that you can use to, to change and modify and adapt VPML, which is very useful. Um, for Polylong, for Polylong uh, the free version is developed on GitHub, so uh, we don't have a lot of contribution, but we have uh, some that we integrate. And um, Polylong Pro, which fully integrates uh, Polylong and uh, the Polylong Pro WooCommerce are developed on a private uh, repository. But um, I would say that we are uh, customer uh, driven. Uh, that is, the new feature are coming from uh, customer ID. Um. So we don't make our money with our plugin. We make the money with the translations that clients order from us. Um, we had like one or two contributions. They were both from required so far. So <laughs> um, normally it's really when we have bigger client projects where they use special plugins or they need special workflows where we change or enhance our plugin. Um, it's on GitHub. You're welcome to contribute. Um, but yeah, so far I guess there was much going on there. Um, do you have a last request to the audience, uh, a question or an invitation? Yeah, for, for my point, um, um, please uh, um, check uh, multi-site and multilingual because we, we have, we had it, sorry, sorry, we had all the time uh, um, people are um, not having that on the list um, and we had a, had a word camp last week and someone came up to me after after I told in, in a, on, on a word on the session that you that we use multi-site and multilingual, and they were simply um, mind blown by okay the possibility to use the multi-site features itself to use that. So um, it's not about um, doing it all with um, with multilingual. Um, if you having more than one site and you um, work with that and you have plugins, um, please check multi-site. It's really a cool feature. But like less people know that, so I want to change that. Okay, I think we can give a round of applause to those four uh, superheroes.